Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to convert a fraction to a decimal. And for our examples, we're going to work through these by hand, so no calculator. Let's jump into number one, where we have one eighth. Now, when we convert a fraction to a decimal, we can divide the numerator, the top number of the fraction, by the denominator, the bottom number of the fraction. So for number one, we need to do one divided by eight. So let's set this up, one divided by eight. Now, as far as one divided by eight, how many whole groups of eight in one? How many eights in one? Well, we can't do that. So we need to use a decimal and then a zero in order to work through the division. Remember, zeros to the right of a decimal or decimal digits do not change the value of the number. So we're able to do this. Now, once we have that decimal and the zero, we can bring the decimal straight up into the quotient, the answer. And I'm going to extend the division bar as well. Now we can think of this as 10 divided by eight. So how many whole groups of eight in 10? How many eights in 10? Well, one. So we need to put the one above the zero. Now make sure that one is above the zero, not the one. We used that zero in the tenths place and thought of this as 10. So the one needs to go above that zero in order to keep everything lined up correctly. Now we multiply one times eight, eight. Subtract 10 minus eight is two. Now we don't have a clean cut zero there at the bottom. So what we can do, we can use another zero that we can bring down to continue on. Now we have 20, 20 divided by eight. So how many whole groups of eight in 20? Well, two, that gets us to 16. Two times eight, 16. Subtract 20 minus 16 is four. So we still don't have that clean cut zero there at the bottom. So let's use another zero that we can bring down. So now we have 40, 40 divided by eight. How many whole groups of eight in 40? Well, five, and that hits 40 exactly. Five times eight is 40, subtract 40 minus 40 is zero. So now we have that clean cut zero there at the bottom. We went all the way over within our division problem and we have that zero at the bottom. So we are done. We get 0 0.125, 125 thousandths. One eighth equals 0 0.125. So 125 thousandths. Now you'll notice when I rewrote that decimal, I started with a zero and then the decimal. This is common when writing decimals because it helps us recognize and see the decimal. We don't want the decimal to get overlooked. So something to keep in mind. Let's move on to number two, where we have five twelfths. So we need to do five divided by 12. So let's set this up. We have five divided by 12. So five divided by 12, how many whole groups of 12 in five? Well, we can't do that. So we need a decimal and a zero in order to work through this. Bring the decimal straight up. We can extend this division bar here, and we can think of this as 50 divided by 12. So how many whole groups of 12 in 50? Well, four, that gets us to 48. Now make sure that four is above the zero. Four times 12, 48. Subtract 50 minus 48 is two. So we need to continue on. Let's use another zero that we can bring down. And now we have 20. So 20 divided by 12. How many whole groups of 12 in 20? Well, one, that gets us to 12. So one times 12 is 12. Subtract 20 minus 12 is eight. Let's use another zero that we can bring down. And now we have 80. So 80 divided by 12. How many whole groups of 12 in 80? Well, six, that gets us to 72. So six here, six times 12, 72. Subtract 80 minus 72 is eight. 
Let's use another zero and keep going here. So we have 80 again. How many whole groups of 12 in 80? Well, six, six times 12, 72, subtract, we get eight. Now I'm going to stop there because that pattern is going to continue on forever. So we end up with a repeating decimal here. We get 0.41 and then those sixes repeat. They will never end. So again, a repeating decimal here. Now we have different options as far as how we want to write out this decimal. The first option, 5 twelfths equals 0 0.416 six and then we put a bar above the six so we can put a bar above the repeating digit or digits if we have multiple digits that repeat the bar is a way for us to write out repeating decimals and in this example the bar above the six tells us that the six repeats or we can round and we can round to whatever place we would like but for this example let's round to the tenths place and the hundredths place. Let's start with the tenths place. So 5 twelfths is approximately, and I'm using the approximately symbol here since we are rounding. It's not exact. Now as far as rounding, we have a 4 in the tenths place with a 1 to the right in the hundredths. So this rounds to 4 tenths. 5 twelfths is approximately 4 tenths. How about rounding to the hundredths place? Well, 5 twelfths is approximately, we have a one in the hundredths and then a six in the thousandths. So we round up here. 5 twelfths is approximately 42 hundredths. So there are some options as far as working with repeating decimals. So there you have it. There's how to convert a fraction to a decimal by hand, so without a calculator. All we need to do is divide the numerator by the denominator, and that will give us the decimal form of the fraction. And keep in mind, we always have the option of rounding if we end up with a long decimal or repeating decimal. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.